Hello everyone. The second patient is a 45-year-old female with end-stage renal failure due to primary IgA nephropathy. She received a preemptive, unrelated kidney transplant now four days ago. Her husband served as donor with a 1A, 1B, 2DR, HLA mismatch and negative crossmatch results. She had no previous transfusion of blood products and together they shared two children. Immunosuppression was provided by induction therapy with an IL-2 receptor blocker and the standard current triple maintenance therapy. Her serum creatinine has now gone up from 100 to 170 micromolar. There are no signs of pre or post transplant problems and she still had urinary output. She and I levels were normal and there was no sign of an infection. Similar to the first patient case, now try to answer the following questions for this specific patient case. The questions to answer are, what is the clinical syndrome? What are the most likely causes for the renal dysfunction? What is the underlying pathophysiology? How can you differentiate these causes and what is the best treatment option? Since there is an acute decline in renal function, you are most worried about an acute antibody-mediated rejection. This is at least supported by the fact that the patient has two kids, which in itself is a risk for antibody-mediated rejection after donation by the spouse. She and I levels were normal, there is good urinary output, and it's too early for recurrence of the original disease to cause the problem. For that reason, you decide to take a renal biopsy. In this biopsy, a combination of lesions in glomeruli, vessels, and the interstitial area are found. Already from a low power view, the glomeruli look hypercellular. This is because there are inflammatory cells in the capillary loops, mostly lymphocytes and monocytes, and the endothelium shows reactive changes in the form of endothelial swelling. The GBM is normal, there are no double contours. In the interstitial area, a mild tubulitis is found in a limited number of tubes. Some of the vascular changes are impressive. This artery shows lymphocytes, which have invaded the endothelial lining, giving rise to a compromised vascular lumen. Focusing on the peritubular capillaries, we can appreciate capillaritis. By light microscopy, there's no evidence of microthrombi. This is a C4D staining, showing positivity for C4D in almost all peritubular capillaries and also in glomerular capillaries. Taken together, the histological lesions, together with the positive C4D staining, are characteristic of acute antibody-mediated rejection. The clinical pathological diagnosis of this patient is acute kidney injury due to antibody-mediated rejection, also known as ABMR. The patient had acute loss of renal function, tissue evidence of ABMR by morphology and C4D staining, as well as the accelerated occurrence of donor-specific antibodies. In a previous lecture, you learned about the immunology and the treatment of ABMR. Removal of the circulating antibodies plays a central role in the treatment of this entity. Acute ABMR is also associated with poor outcomes after kidney transplantation. These patients are at a greater risk for subsequent rejection, chronic ABMR and premature graft loss. However, not all ABMR phenotypes have an equally poor outcome. Strategies to prevent ABMR are of key importance. The present case illustrated the potential risk of pregnancies in female recipients of spousal donor kidneys. Theoretically, the risk of accelerated HLA class 1 AMR with repeat chat talents can be reduced by paired kidney exchange and or acceptable mismatch programs, as will be discussed in Module 2. There is still much discussion about ABMR, including its classification, diagnostic approach and efficacy of strategies for desensitization and or treatment. This include drugs like rituximab, bortezomib and or eculizumab. This patient with ABMR was treated with plasmapheresis, steroids, alemtuzumab and IVIG. 
Unfortunately, renal function was not reversible and serum creatinine stabilized around 200 micromole per liter. So, what have we learned from this specific patient case? Antibody-mediated rejection is characterized by tissue injury, as shown by morphology, tissue deposition, and the occurrence of donor-specific antibodies. Strategies to prevent ABMR are of key importance. Removal of the circulating antibodies plays a central role in the treatment of the acute form of ABMR. And, unfortunately, acute ABMR is associated with poor outcome parameters. So we've now discussed two patient cases with different causes of renal dysfunction, both in the early period after renal transplantation. The first patient had acute tubular necrosis and cellular rejection, and the second patient had an acute antibody-mediated rejection. As you see, there are similarities and differences between both patients. So try to compare them and discuss it on the forum. In the patient interview, you will get to know more about the impact of the first months after the transplantation. When the patient got through the first three months, it doesn't mean that everything is stable. So what can happen after this first period? You will find out in the next module.